Research starts with the things you know, your edge. If you're a mechanic, look at the tools you use. Which are the best? Which are the best value? Or if you're a doctor, see what new technology saves the insurer money, or software systems that reduce costs at hospitals. You probably already know a few companies quite thoroughly. The amateur investor probably can follow between five and eight companies. They could lecture in these five or eight companies. They know them very well. There's 10 to 15,000 public companies in the United States. There's lots more overseas. So you don't have to be experts on lots of companies. You just have to know a few very well. It's a lot of fun. It only takes a few hours a month. It's not a full-time job. I owned Dunkin' Donuts for 12 years. I think I might have talked to them once every year. The story didn't change a lot. You don't have to worry about low-cost imports coming from Korea when you, you own a donut company. You don't have to worry about the economy. You don't have to worry about in somebody inventing a, a new computer chip. The story doesn't change that much. McDonald's earnings have gone up, I think, more than 80-fold over the last 30 years. The stock's gone up 100-fold. What made McDonald's earnings continue to grow? If they had just stuck with a cheap cheeseburger and a cheap hamburger at lunch, they probably would have run into earnings problems 10, 15 years ago. But they expanded their menu, they kept their costs low, they added breakfast, they went overseas. Every day they add two or three more restaurants. People thought there was no room for more McDonald's 5, 10, 15 years ago. They were wrong. If they had done the research, they would have said, well, there's a couple hundred countries out there. There's lots of places to grow. Actual bad economic news, rising interest rates, wars, elections, any of these can push the market down. If you're one of those people that pour over graphs, economic statistics, or astrology charts, trying to figure out what the stock market is going to do next, you are wasting your time. No one can predict the market. You have to understand the market goes down. There's been 95 years this century. We've had 50 declines of over 10%. Of those 50 declines, 15 have been 25% or more. So about once every two years, the market falls 10%. About once every six years, it falls 25%. These are big drops. You have to understand that. That's the nature of the market. In 1990, Saddam Hussein went into Kuwait. The banking system was in trouble. We had a recession. He had all this background noise. Lots of good companies had nothing to do with wars nothing to do with banking. They all went down in 1990. The market fell from 3,000. It fell over 20%. This gave you a great opportunity to buy terrific companies at very good prices. Behind every stock is a company. If the company does terrific over a long period of time, the stock will do terrific. If the company does lousy, the stock's going to do lousy. That's all you're betting on. This is a company that's had 35 years of double-digit earnings growth every single quarter. We've had changes in the Supreme Court. We've had the stock market go up and down. We've had changes in presidents. We've had recessions. We've had wars. All of those things had no effect on automatic data processing. So every time the market went down, it gave you a chance to buy it. You're saying, I believe strongly this company's going to do well. If you start to see symptoms that's not going to happen, the stock's going to very rapidly respond to that. If the company runs out of steam, the stock's going to run out of steam. Look at Fannie Mae. From July through October 1990, the Standard Poor's 500 fell 21%. Fannie Mae fell from about $42 a share to about 26 even though earnings were still increasing. This was a terrific time to buy Fannie Mae. The company was doing well, management was still great, the story was solid, and they had a very good business. But you got to buy the stock at a 38% discount. If you start by looking at the entire universe of stocks, more than 3,000 stocks on the New York Stock Exchange alone, and over 13,000 public companies in total, you'll blow a gasket. So I break stocks into categories, partly to make the job of researching more manageable. Putting stocks into categories is the first step in developing the story. At least you'll know what kind of story it's supposed to be. The category tells you what questions you should be asking about a company. You simply can't expect all stocks to behave the same. Basing a strategy on general maxims, like sell when you double your money, or sell when the price falls 10%, is absolute folly. No formula will apply to all stocks. 
Different stocks behave differently, so they require different approaches, different expectations, and different kinds of stories. Suppose you've made a 50% gain on two companies. One is a fast grower with a long way to go. The other is a big, lumbering, slow growth company that has already saturated 95% of its market, and that market itself is growing slowly. The 50% return is fantastic for the slow grower. The chances are it's time to sell it. The same 50% return could be just the tip of the iceberg for the fast grower. There are basically five categories. One would be fast growers, two would be slow growers, three would be cyclicals, four would be asset plays, and the fifth one would be turnarounds. At the end of this presentation, you'll have an opportunity to explore each category in more detail. In the meantime, remember, categories are guidelines. They are not hard rules. Some companies may not fit neatly into a category. Others may seem to be in two categories at once. Almost all companies change categories at some time throughout their lifetimes. Fast growers, if successful, will always eventually slow their growth. They'll run out of places to go. Cyclicals experiencing long down cycles may become turnarounds. Once recovered, they probably will be cyclicals again. Use the categories as guides to help you build your story, but don't let them limit the questions you ask or the research you do. One thing we can say about companies in general, it's easier to go from 100 million in sales to 200 million dollars in sales than it is to go from 10 billion in sales to 20 billion dollars in sales. So smaller companies tend to have more upside potential than larger companies. But don't dismiss all big companies out of hand. Some big companies defy their size and find exciting new ways to grow their earnings. As well, good opportunities exist in companies that are cyclical, regardless of their size. When most people think about investing in the stock market, they dream about investing in a fast grower, a company that is growing at over 25% a year. At 25% a year, a company's profits will double in three. They quadruple in six. They go up eightfold in nine years. That's how you get a huge stock in a decade. There's not a lot of these, but they're very powerful. And the best part is, you don't have to catch them just as they're taking off. The beauty of growth companies is you have plenty of time. If they're going to grow for 5, 10, 20, 30 years, you don't have to be there the first year or the second year. You could have bought Walmart 10 years after they went public and made 30 times your money. What makes a company grow earnings so quickly? Either it is a rapidly growing industry, or it's a rapidly growing company in a slow growth industry. Rapid revenue growth and rapid earnings growth are the hallmarks of a fast grower. But you just can't buy any stock with hot earnings and hot sales. You have to check the balance sheet and make sure the company can keep growing. One way you can look at growth companies is think of baseball. A normal baseball game has nine innings. You should look at a growth company and say, I don't want to buy it when they're in the first inning. I want to buy it when they're in the second or third inning. They've got the formula right. They've got lots of room to go. So you want to say to yourself, this is a company that's very early in its cycle, like a McDonald's when they're only in a few stores, or limited when they're only in 100 stores. And they had lots of malls to go to. Microsoft was a company you could have bought three years after it went public and made over 20 times your money. Sales and earnings were growing at several times the rate of the companies in the S&P 500 in an industry that was exploding by leaps and bounds. And it had a lot of potential both overseas and domestically. This was only the beginning of a 15 to 20 year growth cycle. You had plenty of time to get involved. There was this amazing company called Superior Industries. I think the stock went up over a hundred fold. They were very good at making aluminum wheels. A lot of car companies went to aluminum wheels. The industry for autos wasn't growing. Aluminum wheels were growing dramatically and they were the best at it. The fast growers get all the attention in the media. But there's nothing wrong with slow-growing stock, provided you get it at a very decent price. Some would say to you, I'm going to sell you a business for $100,000, and they're earning $50,000 a year. And you say, what's the bad news? Let's say the bad news is earnings are never going to grow. They earn $50,000 a year forever. So this is a price earnings multiple of two. You pay $100,000 for $50,000 of earnings, but they're never going to grow. You say, I don't care. I'm going to get a $50,000 return every year. In two years, I get all my money back, and then I'm going to make $50,000 a year on my $100,000 investment forever. So sometimes, even if a company has a very low growth rate in earnings, if the stock is selling at the right price, it may still be a very good deal. A slow to moderate grower will have earnings growth of 3 to 15% a year. One company that I was very lucky with was Service Corp International. 
It's a funeral home company that bought up local family funeral homes. A very steady business. Service Corp could grow earnings at 15% a year when I owned it with very little problems. A slow grower that turns into a no grower is a very bad news situation. So when you start researching the stock, look for these signs. Steady earnings growth. You can find annual earnings growth rates in the research section, as well as estimates for the coming year. Rising dividends. Companies that raise their dividends each year have to have the earnings to do so. A rising dividend is normally a good sign for a stock. Room to keep growing. You want slow growers to go on forever. That's one reason I like Service Corp International so much. This was a great stock for me in the 1980s. At that point, it had a long way to go.